Thank you for taking the time to listen to our weekly service. This is a listener-supported ministry, and we ask that you pray and see what God would have you give. Now let's get to our sermon for today. This morning I'm going to talk to you about waiting for Christmas. If you take a moment and realize this, I don't know how you were, but I know how I was when I was growing up. But one of the parts of Christmas is waiting. And think about this for a moment. Uh, when I was growing up, 1st of December, 2nd of December, every day as it got closer to Christmas, it seemed like every day got longer, slower. I wanted to get those presents. I wanted to open them up. I wanted to enjoy them. And it just seemed like it was just a, a problem. Just slowing down. And that waiting drove me crazy. It got to the point with me that I, I, I started learning the art of finding the presents before Christmas. And then I learned the art of how to unwrap one with the ability to put it back together again so my mom and dad didn't know. And I actually got fairly good at it. But I have learned one other thing. That there's a lot of things my mom knew about that never told me about <laughs> that she knew at all. And I'm already learning that now. Uh, my mom's still alive, but I lost my dad in March and all, but uh, I had a good set of parents and all, and uh, it's amazing how many times, and I grew up getting whipped with the belt a lot, and, uh, but anyhow, uh, but I had some good parents, and, uh, but they would go, they got good at hiding presents, but waiting was a part of the problem. I, I didn't want to wait. I wanted to open my presents up. And every day, and it seemed like the day before Christmas Eve was the longest day there was, because in my house, we always opened the presents up at Christmas Eve. I'm from a German-Polish background, and they did everything Christmas Eve. We have our big dinner Christmas Eve and all. We, uh, su Christmas Day, more or less a leftover day from Christmas and all that. And, and as we grew up and our kids got married and stuff, they went to their others on Christmas Day, so it worked out great for us. But I don't know if you can relate to that, because that's the way it was. I don't get any presents now. <laughs> I don't. I don't get one present. Uh, my wife and I, we both decided that, you know, as the kid, we got more and more grandkids. We can't afford everything, and we won't go into debt for Christmas. So we only take our money and we divide what we got. My, my wife does put a little bit of money aside all year long. We call it the Christmas fund, but officially it's not a fund. Down here they don't have it that I know of up in Maryland. They have that where you actually put money in. You cannot withdraw until the 1st of December. And they call it a Christmas club. But that's how we do our Christmas. We put a little away each week. Um, and then take it out and divide that in what we're going to do. And that's our... Well, today you'll get a present. Okay. <laughs> Don't make any bad trades. interesting afternoon, I will tell you that. Especially if everybody participates. The more that participates in this game, the wilder it gets. Let me ask you a question. And I don't want you to answer this out loud, but what are you waiting for this Christmas? Are you longing for something? Expecting to receive? Are you looking for anything special this Christmas? In the Gospel, or Luke... We're going to look at this. You can keep it for those. If you want, got a Bible, you can open. We're going to be in Luke the whole time, but one verse. Uh, chapter 2. Two people are spoken of in Luke. Now, one is uh, Simeon, and the other is Anna. Anna. What's interesting is they're part of the Christmas story, but most people have never heard of them. They're at the very end of the Christmas story. And what's always interesting to me is the fact that uh, the wise men were never at the manger, but yet you see that all the time. The wise men didn't even show up until a year later. And, uh, and, uh, but yet somehow that got in there, but the, the, the two people here we're going to talk about this morning, you don't hear much about. But we're going to talk about these two people. Simeon, in verse 25 of Luke 2, says, And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. Simeon lived for God and did all he could to obey the law. Not everybody can obey the whole law, but he did the best he could. 
And like most Jews, he was looking for the coming of Christ. All Jews were always looking, but Simeon was different. He was fanatical about it. He got up every day looking, wait, is this going to be the day? He would be excited that the day was the possibility for Christ to come. And he was looking for that. And the word waiting here actually means not to just think about, but it also means actively waiting. So he was pretty excited about this, looking for it. Waking up every day, excited about this could be the day the Savior was going to enter the world. He was so enthusiastic about it that it was just like a child waiting for a Christmas present for Christmas. He was that excited about the coming of Jesus Christ coming into the world. Now the the nation of Israel at this time uh, didn't hear from God at all. Matter of fact, between the Old and the New Testament, there's 400 years of silence where nothing's happening. And during this time, the Roman is ruling everything. They're under the occupation of, of Rome. Many wondered if the Savior would ever come. Do you ever pray for something or wish for something and it just seems like it's never going to get here? And, all, and then, in a sense, you lose faith or you stop praying about it, you stop thinking about it because it just doesn't seem like it's ever going to get here. That's the way the Jews started feeling. They still looked, but Simeon never lost faith. He kept saying, today could be the day. And by the way, for those that do know Christ as their Savior, there's a special crown for those looking for the coming of Christ the second time, which is the rapture of the church right now. That's what we're waiting for at this very moment. It could be the day. Could be before we get to open the presents. <laughs> but because of God's grace and seeing Simeon and, and how he was waiting for the Messiah, something special happened to him that God blessed him with. And we see that in verse 26. It was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he has seen the Lord Christ. So God decided to make a promise to him because he was so enthusiastic about it. He said, you're going to actually see Christ with your own eyes before you die. That's going to be my promise to him. So God blessed him in that he was going to see the Messiah that the Jews were waiting for us for so long. His long wait was finally going to be over. And we see in verse 27 of Luke 2, and he says, and he came by the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do him after the custom of the law, then took he him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now let us thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. So interesting is he's led by the Spirit, okay, to go to the temple that day at that time. God knowing that Christ was going to be in that temple. And, uh, and the parents were taking him in there according to the customs. Uh, and he goes in there and he sees that. And I, I, I had to sit there and imagine this and think about to put myself in his place. Something he's been waiting most of his life for. Enthusiastic, never getting tired. And he finally sees him. And what does he do? He grabs him. Can you imagine Mary grabbing the child out of Mary's hands? And, and, I mean, it doesn't say, please, can I have the child? I don't know how it worked. You know, it doesn't give us that detail. But grabs the child and more or less, per, per, near, per, near, you know, p puts it up. I'm getting too southern. Per, near. Holds the child up and praises God that he finally sees the Savior. But you know what's interesting? He doesn't just get to see the Savior. He actually picks him up and holds him. And the greatest gift he's ever waited for He's now holding in his hands, and he realizes this is the Savior of the world. The person is going to come in, pay the debt, so we could go to heaven. And he knows that. And he can't imagine anything any greater. So his long wait, finally he's crying with joy, because now he's holding the Savior in his hand. Anna now is the second person looking for Christ to come. There's not a whole lot said about her. But in Luke uh, chapter 2, verse 36, and it says, And there was one Anna, a prophetess, a daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Aser. She was of great age and lived with a husband seven years from her virgincy. Anna 
was there in the temple at the same time Simeon was. So they both got to see Christ that same day in the temple at the same time. And just saw Jesus. After her husband died, she had dedicated, just before she saw Christ now, when her husband died, she dedicated herself to fasting and praying in the temple. Matter of fact, the Bible tells us that she never actually left the temple anymore. She stayed in the temple and prayed and fasted, looking for the forgiveness of sins, which was going to be come in through the Messiah, which was Jesus Christ. And Luke 38 says, And she coming in that instant gave thanks likewise unto the Lord and spake to them, to all them that looked for the redemption in Christ. This was the redemption. This was the key to get out of jail free to get in heaven card. It was all going to be done through Jesus Christ. Because for almost a thousand years or probably longer, the Jews tried to obey the law in order to get to heaven. And if you could obey all the law, you can get into heaven. But nobody could do that. And God knew that ahead of time. But he had to show Israel that it couldn't be done. So Jesus Christ had to come into this world and fulfill that law and not sin and make a way for us. So he paid for the debt. The law had to be fulfilled. God's so righteous. He says, You're, no one's going to get into heaven until that gets fulfilled. But Jesus Christ did it for us. Now think about this. We go, this, this Christmas Eve or Christmas Day, when you get there, you're going to have gifts, you're going to have your family, and all, and you're going to open presents. So, well, there'll be a present under your tree, and it's going to have your name on it. And until you grab that present and get it and open it up, it's never going to be yours. As long as it stays under that tree and you don't pick it up, it's never going to become yours. Now, I got a little granddaughter, she's four years old. She doesn't care what the present is. She just likes opening the package. <laughs> Every year for the last couple of years, she just tears it apart and says, where's my next present? That's all she cares about is opening the present. But Jesus Christ came into this world so we could have a way to get to heaven. It's a gift. He doesn't make anybody get saved. But the problem is, you have to grab the gift. You have to take it. If you don't take it, it never becomes yours. And that's something that we have to realize here this morning. So, like Simeon, Anna finally gets to see the Messiah that's going to make that way for them to be able to get to heaven. And she's rejoicing, and it says here, to the point where she just starts telling everybody in the temple. Goes outside. Hey, he's here. The Savior's here. We're going to be able to get to heaven now. Finally gets to see it, and think about that. Now, can you imagine, I don't know how old Simeon was, but he waited a long time, and now when he finally held that child, he said there, now I can die. I can die in peace. Now he saw the whole reason Christ came into this world was for redemption for all of us. Always remember one thing, and I try to stress this a lot. Salvation is not just looking and saying, I believe in Jesus Christ. That does not get you saved. It's part of salvation, but it's not salvation. Biblical salvation is a little bit more. It's not hard, but it's not. It's more than just saying, I believe Jesus Christ died for me. In Matthew, it tells us that Jesus said, some guy, people came up to him, and I want to enter heaven, and Jesus says, depart from me, I never knew you. And, he sa and they said to him, but we, did, we went to church every Sunday. You know? uh, we, we went out and, and spoke in your name. And it even said they did miracles in his name. And he says, again, depart from me, ye that work iniquity. I never knew you. They were never saved. And what's sad about this, and what I try to stress this a lot, is that a person can think he's saved and not be saved. Those people actually thought they were saved and were not saved. So that's why I think it's important. It's not a religion that gets you to heaven. It's not anything but what's written in the Word of God. It's not what Glenn Taylor says, it's what the Word of God says. And it's very simple on how to get saved and make sure you know Christ as your personal Savior. And I'll be glad to answer any question, even afterwards, any day, or anything else. And that includes those of you out in the, in the web. Simon and, uh, Simeon and uh, Anna, both waiting for the greatest gift the world would ever see. So what are you waiting for this Christmas? What are you anxious about? What are you looking for? 
for those of us that truly know Christ as our Savior, this is the birth of this, our Savior that came into the world. So my challenge to you, and I've been doing this every Sunday for December, is that what are you going to give Christ on His birthday? Because when you have a birthday, people come and give you presents. So what are you going to give Christ on His birthday? What you can gift is saying, you know, I'll be more faithful in church. I'll come every Sunday. I'll be at every Bible study. Or maybe I'm going to pray more this year. Or maybe I'm going to give more um, in the offering this year. Uh, or whatever, you know. Something you're going to give Christ on His birthday. After all, it is His birthday. And that's why we give presents. It's a symbolization of giving just the way the wise men gave gifts when they showed up. We celebrate the birth of Christ and that He came so we have a way to heaven. Christmas is our redemption. A lot of people argue the fact that, oh, you know, that was a pagan holiday, December 25th. Well, so, so if it was. What's important is that we celebrate the birth of Christ. We don't know the actual day He was born. We don't know that. As far as we can tell, it's probably late winter, early spring. But it doesn't matter as long as we're celebrating His birthday. Instead of looking at the bad things and saying, well, man, I, gotta, I, I don't even want to go to Haywood Mall because it's so packed. The people are, you know, I feel like hitting a couple of them. Yes. <laughs> Most of you here know evil. I was, I was at a place across from the mall yesterday with my wife, and I happened to see him before he saw me. He was in there with Deborah. So I, I had some things uh, that my wife had me holding, so I put, my, put it up to where he couldn't see me, and I walked over near him, and then I bumped him hard. Deborah turned around, and she thought evil was going to hit me, you know. I was prepared to be hit. But, uh, and he looked at me and just started laughing at all. But you never know who's watching, who sees you, what you're doing. But the key thing is here, this is about Jesus Christ and about, the, about his birthday. And we, even though the presents are good, I love decorations, I love the tree, and I love that. But the most important part is it's Christ's birthday and what he did for us and what he can do for us. But that's what's really important. Now, Christ couldn't have said it better than this, and I'll, leave, I'll close with this. In John 14, 6, Jesus said unto him, he was witnessing to a man, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And there's no way anybody will ever get into heaven without going through Jesus Christ. That's the only way. So what are you waiting for this Christmas? Think about that the remainder of this day in this week, week and a half. Let's pray. Father, in heaven. We pray that we have been a blessing to you. For further assistance, call us at 864-270-1472 anytime. Send email to info at stlmm.org or visit our website at www.stlmm.org. Like any ministry, it costs money to operate. Please consider supporting this ministry as God leads you with your prayers and your financial gifts by going to www.stlmm.org and clicking on Donations.